The big question is the so-called prophet, Chad Daybell, going to rat out his wife, who he once called a goddess, when they were dating? Is he going to rat her out and pin all the blame on her? Why does it matter? Because remember, even though Lori Vallow has been convicted and then, oh my goodness, uh, I'm glad she got totally made up, full face of makeup and frosty hair for that mugshot. But she was found guilty in the murders of her little boy, JJ, and her little girl, Tylee, and implicated in the murder of her brand new husband. Is it number five, Jackie? Yes. Number five. You know that by heart now. Number five, husband number five, the so-called prophet, Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy Daybell, who, healthy as a horse, a young woman, just ran a marathon, died in her sleep. Before I go to Nate Eaton, um, a news director of the East Idaho News, you can find him on Facebook, Nate Eaton Reporter, I have got to go to a special guest, Tom Evans, a juror on the Lori Daybell trial. And part of a book, Money, Power, and Sex, the Lori Daybell Trial. So Tom Evans, you not only lived through it during the trial of Lori Daybell, you also got in on the book. You relived it. You re-traumatized yourself. So going through, living through Colt Mom Lori Vallow's trial, can I ask you, what are your thoughts on Chad Daybell? Oh, man, I have a lot of thoughts about Chad Daybell. I think the most telling thing that I've seen recently is I was sitting in court in the morning before trial started and Chad sits maybe 10 or 15 feet away from me. And he was scrolling through his computer, looking at the pictures of Tammy's autopsy. And he had no emotion on his face. I watched Chad all the time in court looking for some kind of emotion, but he showed nothing. He just scrolling through like he's looking at Facebook or something. And then um, later on, when testimony was happening and the jury was seeing those photos, Chad was crying, carrying on, and John Pryor's making a big show out of handing him a Kleenex, and he's just putting on a big show. So you asked if Chad's going to turn on Tammy Daybell. I think he's going to do anything, or Lori Vallow, I'm sorry. He's going to do anything he can to get out of this. You know, I'm just wondering, um, according to some reports, he did manage to squeeze out a tear during that 911 call. I didn't see that at all as I was watching him. Uh, maybe some eagle-eyed reporter named Nate Eaton may have seen it, but hold on, hold on, Nate. Before you jump off the cliff, I want you to hear more of the Tammy Daybell 911 call played in court. Listen. Yeah, she's not even broke. Okay, can I get your name? Chad Daybell. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh -oh. Okay, Chad, I'm going to get somebody up to you right now, okay? You have a corner where the blinking yellow light is with the red house. Yes, sir. Uh, red house on the corner. Yes. Blinking okay. yellow light. All right. Okay. We'll get somebody out to you, okay? I'm so sorry. Okay. If you need anything else, you call me back, okay? Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Okay, Nate Eaton, did I just see the defense lawyer hand him a box of tissues? Really? I haven't seen that since, let's see, the Lyle Menendez trial, where the defense attorney was smoothing down the killer brothers' sweaters during the trial. They were dressed up all preppy. Um, and, and I noticed in the 911 call, oh gosh, I wish I could try this case, uh, although they're doing a great job. Uh, he goes, and then he goes, oh, yeah, we are the red house on the corner. <gasps> okay, I just, you know, help me out here, Nate. Well, Nancy, this is the first time we saw any sort of emotion from Chad in this trial. He has sat there stone-faced, looking straight ahead as autopsy photos of the children or what's left of the children were shown, as emotional uh, witnesses took the stand and cried about their love of these people who have, have been murdered, who have been killed. He showed no emotion except when he heard himself crying in that call. And we haven't seen any of the other emotions since.